Remembrance Day, lest we forget. It's a time to remember the many sacrifices that were paid by our soldiers to allow us to enjoy the freedoms we have today. It's also a time to review how our society and our government treats veterans and their families. Joining me now in studio is Wayne King, a retired Canadian Forces Colonel with the Air Force and service officer for the Lethbridge Royal Canadian Legion. Wayne, welcome back to Bridge City News. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So what made you decide to enlist in the Armed Forces way back when? Way back when, indeed. That was back in 1959 when I joined the Royal Canadian Air Force. Uh, it was a variety of uh, reasons, uh, not least of which was the occasion to watch the uh, Golden Hawks uh, fly in air demonstrations around uh, southern Alberta and uh, other places. But it was also, uh, I think, an opportunity for me to uh, get involved and uh, respect the, the service of uh, so many Canadians uh, at that time, of course, not too long after World War II and uh, immediately following Korea. So uh, it was a, a time of heightened interest in the armed forces. How fast did some of those planes go back then? Well, they were all subsonic uh, flights at that time. There, there were experimental aircraft that were trans and supersonic, but uh, the ones in active service were all uh, subsonic. So uh, they would go uh, in the order of uh, 600 uh, uh, nautical miles per hour. Wow. Ever do any tricks, Top Gun style? I well, I've been involved in uh, the uh, air defense operations in uh, eastern Canada to a large extent, and uh, we did get involved in some uh, William Tell operations. Uh, that was uh, a competition that was carried out in uh, Florida, uh, Homestead Air Force Base down in uh, the Florida Panhandle. What do you think of our Air Force today? Last I heard, we're looking at getting some used Australian jets? Yes, we are. Uh, and, uh, well, I, uh, I have uh, personal views as to the applicability or the uh, uh, appropriateness of that purchase. Uh, nonetheless, I do uh, recognize that uh, the government is at least paying attention to the needs of the Air Force uh, in terms of uh, fighter aircraft, uh, fighter escorts, and so on. Uh, I, I don't think that it was a move forward to obtain uh, a significant number of used aircraft which are no farther technically advanced than the aircraft we're presently operating. It was only a question of numbers rather than capability. Wayne, what are your thoughts when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was holding a town hall meetings across the country and he said, our veterans are asking for more than we can give? That was a statement that A, surprised me to a very great extent uh, and it also disturbed me as a veteran in that uh, I and uh, all of the, the veterans who have served over the years have literally put their lines, uh, lives on line in defense of Canadian democracy. To turn around and say, uh, the, where the Prime Minister said, we can't necessarily uh, give you what you're asking for, uh, denigrates, I think, the service of those veterans in uh, support of Canadian uh, Canadian uh, citizens. There, there is no, uh, no way you can fully describe the circumstances and uh, the terrors and so on of individuals who are serving in uh, areas of conflict such as Afghanistan. Uh, that was a very, very different uh, conflict than any that we had undertaken before where you have uh, a situation where the uh, enemy, so-called enemy, is in uniform, you can recognize them as such, and you know uh, who you're facing and what their capabilities are. In the more modern aspect, where you have individuals in the theater, uh, right next door to you, perhaps in the room with you, who are vir uh, virtually uh, teenagers, and dressed in civilian dress and so on, and you have no idea whether uh, those individuals are a combatant or whether they are an individual who is just pursuing their, their innocent lives. Is Ottawa doing enough to help our veterans when it comes to uh, lifelong pensions, reinstating those lifelong pensions, and veterans with PTSD? PTSD is a particularly difficult uh, malady for uh, the veteran, but not only the veteran, but also the veteran's family. The uh, service in theaters such as Afghanistan uh, and other locations brings about a, a psychological change in the individual. 
And I think there is far too little understood as both the, the root causes of PTSD as well as any successful means of treating it. Did you ever suffer from any? I have not personally done so, no. But I am in uh, daily contact with quite a number of veterans who do suffer from PTSD. And even though they're no longer in the theater of operations, the effects remain with the veteran and their families. How about the uh, Trudeau Liberal Party's promise to reinstate lifelong pensions? Has that happened? To a degree, it has. What they have indicated is where uh, a settlement uh, occurs, a substantial settlement occurs from uh, a disability or an injury resulting from overseas uh, or even uh, in Canada, uh, a uh, circumstance where they might have suffered significant injury, the veteran is authorized or rather offered uh, a lifetime pension of whatever so many dollars per month. There is also the option though of uh, offering that veteran a lump sum payment. The difficulty which is not I think fully explained or fully uh, brought to the table is that if the veteran chooses a lifetime pension and they uh, one year even one month later uh, suffer a fatal injury in a car accident or something of that sort, then that pension ceases. The family gets nothing beyond that. And the veteran, of course, uh, by that time is uh, deceased, uh, whereas with a lump sum payment, should uh, the individual choose that, once they get that lump sum payment, if they suffer that same injury or uh, uh, fatal uh, circumstance, at least the family retains that lump sum payment to support them over the, the next number of years. Let's talk about the poppy, mm -hmm. the significance of the poppy. Mm -hmm. You're wearing one, I'm wearing one, always yeah. on the left, yes. above the heart, right? Correct. Why should people wear poppies? It is an indication, uh, an outward visible indication of uh, the remembrance of the service of our veterans, of our armed forces in support of democracy. But it's also a symbol that the uh, citizens of uh, Canada, or at least those who are wearing that poppy, uh, support the troops, support the, the activities of our veterans, not only within the community itself, but in pursuit of the Canadian uh, objectives and ideals in foreign nations. Do you think the younger generations fully realize the cost of the freedoms that were paid? No, I don't. But I don't know that that's necessarily a surprising situation. Uh, I think it's all too uh, common for uh, the younger generation to view uh, wartime. First of all, they don't really want to think about it. Uh, they don't understand it, and nor do they really uh, take into account the, the actual sacrifice that that veteran has undertaken to uh, support them in their current mode of life. You know, I go through some of these cemeteries as well, and I see some of the young soldiers who were killed, 19, 20, 21. Yes, yes. They were just kids. They were, very definitely. Fighting for their country. Yep, they were. And the freedoms that we enjoy yeah, today. Yeah. That brought a tear to my eye when I saw yeah, that. I'm just, yeah. unbelievable. If, if you take a look at uh, the average age of the uh, soldier, sailor, airman during World War II, he was about 18 or 19 years old. They're uh, just kids, you're quite right but they carried an enormous load on behalf of the country. When someone purchases a poppy, makes a donation for the poppy, what does the money go towards? The money goes, uh, it's uh, considered in trust. It goes to the uh, poppy fund, poppy committee. Uh, each branch has a poppy fund, which they use for a variety of reasons, most uh, significant of which is to support the individual veterans uh, at a critical time when they do need some financial aid to overcome some uh, short-term circumstance. It's intended as a, any uh, poppy payment is intended as a, a, a short-term assist to the veteran. And, uh, but we also use the poppy funds to uh, support, for example, some of the uh, uh, organizations, uh, the uh, full care facilities or the assisted living facilities where veterans are in residence and it assists those uh, facilities in uh, having the equipment, the support equipment necessary, not only quite frankly for the veterans, 
but also for other residents within that uh, institution. War is never pleasant, but sometimes it's necessary. What do you say to somebody that says, you know what, I'm anti-war, you should never go to war. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that person? You will never find a soldier, a sailor or an airman who has been involved in a theater of operations to say, yes, I, I like being involved in this war. I want to do whatever it is that I, I have to, uh, shoot my rifle or uh, drop bombs and so on. But killing uh, another human being, yeah, that's it, devastating. No, it does, you'll never find a veteran uh, to say that that's what they should be doing. The veteran is there in support of his nation's objective in uh, whether it's through NATO, through the United Nations, or uh, other uh, situations. So uh, Korea is an example where it was uh, initiated, the uh, peacekeeping action was initiated, or it was called a peacekeeping action at that time, uh, it was initiated uh, uh, through the uh, United Nations Security Council and General Assembly. So it's, it's not individual armed forces who go out and say, yes, we're going to do this or do that. It's, it's in support of national objectives, national uh, programs. Now, just below your beautiful poppy, I see some wonderful medals as well. Yes. Why don't you explain to our viewers uh, maybe one or two of the medals that you have on your chest? Well, uh, there's two, uh, two that I would mention. One, uh, the uh, solid, solid red is uh, the CD or uh, Canadian Forces Decoration, and it signifies... Uh, a certain period of service uh, within the armed forces. So how many years? Uh, the uh, basic medal itself uh, is uh, uh, 14 years. Then, then there's an, an additional 12 years to uh, earn the uh, bar. Mm -hmm. And there are additional bars beyond that for each 12-year segment that uh, the individual serves. The other medal beside it, uh, the uh, red, white, and blue, is uh, a similar... Uh, service decoration in this time uh, from the uh, Corps of Commissioners. And uh, Corps of Commissioners uh, was an organization originating from World War I. It was started up as a means of trying to uh, seek uh, gainful employment for veterans returning to Canada. And uh, it gave, uh, at that time, preference, uh, hiring preference to the veteran, uh, certainly within any government organization. Wayne, what kind of a reputation do Canadian soldiers have overseas, especially when it comes to peacekeeping missions? How much of a difference have we made over the years? Over the years, I would say that uh, Canadian uh, missions in uh, peacekeeping and so on have been very much outstanding in terms of the, the actual number of personnel involved. We have a relatively small armed forces in Canada, but yet they have served worldwide in various, uh, particularly UN operations. And in that uh, role, they have uh, certainly paid very great dividends to, uh, to the success of those uh, missions. So, yeah, I think we're uh, carrying a lot more weight than our size would indicate. How did you feel when Canada pulled out of Afghanistan? I could understand the government's uh, reluctance to carry on an open-ended commitment. Uh, at the same time, I felt that uh, we're leaving without the job being completed. And uh, it's never pleasant to be over there and to have uh, our uh, armed forces personnel under threat of uh, death or injury and so on. Uh, we lost a very significant number of our uh, fellow countrymen and uh, they all went willingly over there. So, uh, but we didn't see the end of that particular, particular conflict. In fact, there is no end even yet to it. What do you say to uh, a young person who's considering joining the armed forces, either the Air Force, the Army, mm -hmm. the Navy? Mm -hmm. Based on my own personal experience, and really that I think is uh, where I would have to start, I would say that uh, you would be hard pressed to find a, a better career path or a better way of pursuing any service to our country. The benefits available to serving personnel in terms of uh, education benefits, as well as the- It's all paid for, correct? It's all paid for. Uh, the, uh, uh, all of, uh, while they're in service, all of their uh, medical, dental, uh, and other uh, requirements are paid. And uh, it's, it's a, an opportunity to deal in a 
a form of uh, camaraderie with the, your fellow uh, service members. You could be posted anywhere in where uh, Canadian service personnel are uh, resident. And before you arrive, you know that there are those there that you have met and uh, served with in other locations. So you never go into a theater where it's, uh, or a base where you're the complete stranger. Wayne King, retired Canadian Forces Colonel and Service Officer with the Royal Canadian Legion here in Lethbridge. Thanks a lot for your time today. You're very welcome. Thank you.